Hi, I'm Don. I still owe you the tutorial on how I did the plasma of the gun of the Space Marine, but the video today is kind of similar. Today, we're going to finish this Void Dragon, a commission work for Geekolodian Studios. We are going to paint the scarabs and the lightning effects and we're going to make it glow. However, I'm going to tell you and show you that fluorescent paints are not the best paints to make miniatures look like they're glowing. Oh, before we proceed, do subscribe to the channel if you like minis and mecha. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by this brand. Today we're going to use the airbrush because I want to finish this model already since I started painting this model a couple of months ago. I highly recommend using my thinning sauce for painting with the airbrush. However, water will do. My thinning sauce is basically thinner, which is alcohol. It has alcohol content to better dissolve the paints and flow improver to help prevent tip drying. I use Mecha Pure White in this painting because it's so easy to airbrush and basically it's very white because it's pure white. could actually do away without thinning the mecha colors because they're pre-thinned for airbrush use and you just need to use a bigger nozzle maybe 0.4 and jack up the pressure to around maybe 20 psi however i still highly recommend using my thinning sauce especially if you're doing army painting or painting bigger models like Gunpla. I painted the pure white in two thin coats. Now we do a gloss white wash. This is an important step because this will be the underpainting of our flow paints. However, the usual thinning for wash consistency is around one part paint to around three parts water. With this one, we did not mix it with three parts water. We just thinned the gloss white one is to one. Less water means the paint will not run around the crevices, which we actually want. However, I want a more opaque underpainting so that we don't need to like apply multiple layers of washes before we could paint the flow paints. Notice that the gloss white paint is not thinned enough and it's not running around the crevices and the details. I had to like paint it along the details but this is worth it because we don't have to paint multiple passes. Notice that my painting is sloppy but this is fine because the flow paints, it will kind of blend everything together later. You should focus on like covering all of the tiny details of the model like the crevices and the details with gloss white because this will be our underpainting for the flow paints but then again don't really focus on making it super clean because it won't be worth it also notice that i'm using the thin down white gloss paint around the lightning effects because we weren't able to paint it really nicely with the airbrush the airbrush gave a nice glow to the white white layers or the white elements but this paint will actually give more definition i painted this in two passes after around two passes i think you have a pretty good coverage this is one of the reasons why i highly recommend the gloss white paint the gloss white paint dries fast however because it's glossy it might not look like it's dry 
Now we are brush flow paints. You could actually hand paint or brush paint these flow paints, but we're going for efficiency. So since we're using the airbrush, I'm not going to use the model colors, the flow paints of the model color range, and instead we're going to use the Mecha flow paints. These paints are easier to airbrush as usual. The Mecha flow paints are kinda too thin to thin further. You could actually just add a bit of flow improver to help prevent tip drying. So much like the model color counterpart, these paints are kinda translucent or transparent. So you have to paint it around in three or even four thin coats. Also notice here I'm not being mindful of the overspray because we're going for a like glowing look. So overspray is fine. Oh by the way, the Mecha Green Flow is greener than the model color Green Flow. Again, around 3 to even 4 thin coats will give you a nice coverage. Make sure to let dry in between coats and you could use a hair dryer to speed up the process. Once happy with the green flow, we move on to the magenta flow. Now we use a black background so that I could sell you the glowing effect of my painting so that my like my mediocre painting will look more impressive. Similar to the green flow, it's a matter of painting this magenta flow in around 3 to even 4 thin coats. I was going for a less uniform coverage with the magenta flow so that the lightning has more volume. But it has like a very pink look instead of the nice magenta. So I'm not really happy at this point of the painting. The thin coats of magenta is looking too pink but I can't really put a graphic that says fail because we'll get comments again. So we push on with the painting of the magenta although I'm not really happy. Now I'm going to give this a uniform magenta painting. I gave it like initially nice mist coats of magenta but again it's too pink. So now we're going to push this to like a uniform magenta color. The painting of the lightning is kinda tricky because you really have to rotate the model so that you have good coverage in all angles of the details. But painting flow paints or at least for the effect that we're going for this one is pretty easy because overspray is fine because we're going for a glowing effect. So if we overspray on the void dragon, I'm imagining it's just a reflection of the lightning effects. Or it's just me justifying my laziness to mask the void dragon. <laughs> Never flood the painting of the flow paints because you will just produce spider webs or you'll end up with really thick coats and it's not going to be nice. So as expected, unlike the green flow, the magenta flow is too flat and we need to do more highlights. Now as you can see, the flow paints are not like a magical paint that will make the painting look like it's glowing. So in the next few like steps, you'll see that you really need to paint with highlights. Now you can see here the reason why I said that flow paints are not the best paints to make like to make the painting look like it's glowing. Now we're painting a bit of edge highlights but later after this step you'll realize that the flow paints are not really the best paints for glow effects. 
Like I always say in my previous videos, there is no right or wrong in art or painting, but there is a more efficient way to make something look like it's glowing. So have you tried glazing the flow paints over white underpainting and desperately try to make it look like it's glowing? Yes, I've tried that too and it's a fail. I mean, it won't look like it's glowing until you do this step. So I use squid pink here but basically you could use a magenta paint, not the magenta flow paint, a magenta paint and mix it with the white gloss paint. That mixture or the squid pink here as you can see will be your highlight color. So similar to the plasma gun that we did on the Space Marine, it is important to note that the wash, this step actually, is the most important step on making or in making something look like it's glowing. You could actually use just gloss white paint thin down into wash consistency and you'll produce a brighter more glowing effect but i'm going for a less or like a more subtle look that's why i use squid pink the point here is that when you want to make something look like it's glowing maybe the eyes or this one you have to determine which is your core element like for this one the details the writings on the rocks is like the source of the glow that's why we're doing lighter color wash a lighter color wash will give that very convincing glow effect also notice that paint thinned down with water is very runny thus it's running around the crevices or along the crevices and details of the model this is the main reason why I highly recommend you use mediums for glazing because you don't want runny paints when glazing. But if you're doing washes and you want your paints to be super runny, water is the best additive or the best like element to thin your paints. It is important to note here that these washes are not very opaque. However, you really need to thin them really well with water so that they, they will be so runny and they will run along the details and crevices. However, again, they're not very opaque, so you have to do this around a couple of times. Now you can see the reason why I said that flow paints are not the best paints that will make your miniature glow. It's actually the gloss white paint or lighter color paints that will make like the, that really nice glow effect. Now you can see our scarabs are really really glowing because the yellow green wash is kind of making it look like those yellow green wash is the core or the source of the glow and then the flow paints is just the afterglow. Wait, wait, is afterglow the right word? So I'm not really sure, but basically the flow paints is just the glow around like the source of light, which is the lighter color. Here you can see I'm just flexing that I can paint with my left hand. <laughs> That's it Pansit, I hope you liked the video, do give the video a thumbs up if you like learned something new or at least you found the video informative or at the very least entertaining. I hope I explained it like clearly how to make things look like they're glowing. Basically, make sure that you have a core like a center or source of the light or source of the glow. That center or core, may it be details or the center of the object, that should be in lighter color. So again, the flow paints are not magical paints that will make your miniature glow. Next time, we won't use the airbrush so that I could show you how to efficiently use the flow paints. That's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!